So thank you, everyone. We are officially beginning today's webinar, Joyful Reading at School and at Home. And I'm Julie Duffield. I'm here to help you with technical support with my colleague, Delphine Kwan. As we go to the next slide, we're going to just go over some virtual meeting norms. And Pam will take us to that slide. Um, keep your video on. It's great to see faces. But if you have a slow connection, we'll understand that you'll turn it off. Use the chat to support each other, share ideas, questions, use the hand raising. The, um, if you can remain on mute, that would be great. We have lots of folks in the room, so we're using the chat as the main way of interacting. Please thank you for participating fully like you just did. And of course, have fun learning together today. As we go into the next slide, we're just going to ask a little bit about who's in the room today and, throw, and uh, share some polls. So we'll bring up those polls about who is joining us. You should see in the, on your screen now a poll roll, roll poll pop up. Got, well, thank you. Got lots of preschool teacher and paraprofessionals, school administrators. And if it's other and it's not there, use the chat to describe. Pam, you can probably see those coming up as well. We'll yeah, give another. Yes. Great. It's wonderful to see all of our early childhood educators joining us. And hey, thank you, student. We have student and oh, literacy hey. coordinator in the chat after school. Wonderful parents. We've got some parents and coaches, school board members or state leaders. Fantastic. Um, social services, special ed early start. Thank you so much. We'll hand it over now to our, our colleague, Kim Austin who's been planning and uh, supporting a lot of this webinar. Kim, over to you about Rail West. Thanks, Julie. It's wonderful to see you all here. Um, feel free to keep using the chat to introduce yourselves and say where you're from and use the chat throughout this uh, next 90 minutes. It's fine if your camera doesn't work and your audio doesn't work, mainly if you can access the chat. Um, that's the best. So who are we? We are Regional Educational Laboratory West, one of 10 labs across the country that do three things. We do research, we provide TA, and we also facilitate dis dissemination of research evidence-based practice. And that's what today is all about, is starting with a little bit of research and getting into a whole lot of practice. Um, so thanks for joining us. And we wanted to also invite you to participate in the rest of the series. So this is webinar two, the series of four, and um, we're also happy to provide the recording for webinar one, which was in January, and welcome all of you back who attended webinar one, the community of practice, which was great fun, where we got into small groups and shared what we tried out from webinar one. Here we are in webinar two, which is about cultivating a love of books through all kinds of creative expression, and what we're hoping is that you will go out and try some of the things, get inspired um, by the wonderful ideas that are going to be shared today and come back on April 15th and do a one hour community of practice session with us because we learn so much from you. And um, we've already had some folks share some beautiful art that they've done with their kids and you'll see a little bit of that today. So it's uh, back to you all for a, a, a little interactive activity. You'll see a code in the chat for a link to click on. And we wanna hear from you. What's your favorite artistic way to express yourself? And that can be anything from performing art, visual art, home decorating, how you choose your clothes in the morning, poetry. And just to say, Kim, there's a link in the chat where people can click on the mentor media to um, put in their words. Great. So some folks have found the link in the chat. They're putting in words. They're, we've got dancing, finger paint, laughing. That's great. <laughs> Singing, baking. Yes. Love it. What else are you seeing, Pam? I'm seeing music music and dance and dancing art cooking i love cooking and i love eating too that makes me i don't know if that's expressing myself or just enjoying the expression of food but it's all related talking that's a great way to express yourself writing singing beautiful decorating 
and go oh, gardening. Yes, now's the time to go out and get, get your fingers in the dirt. Do that gardening. Beautiful. Yes, and smaller and smaller. And it's my getting eyes smaller. are getting older and older. <laughs> Feel free to keep sharing in the chat, but um, decorating cakes, yes, smiling, Beautiful. sketching. Thank you, everyone. So I just want to introduce our three speakers today. We have Pam Speecher, who you've already heard a little bit from, um, who's at Rail West in West Ed and in Davis. We have Thea Fabian, who's with Fresno Unified School District. And we have Danielle Gariani, she's down in San Diego. All three of them started as teachers and all three of them continue to support teachers in many different ways. And we're just thrilled to have some real life principals in the room who are super busy trying to get kids back in classrooms but have taken some time with us today to share what the exciting things they're doing. So with that, I'll hand it over to Pam. Wonderful, thank you, Kim. Okay, so we are going to have a lot of joyful time together today. Um, sometimes you might feel a little overwhelmed, like a lot of information is coming at you, but just don't worry. We're also going to take a lot of pauses to breathe and do some self affirmations. And we're going to start actually by getting into um, just a nice transition activity. It's just a settling in activity because we know that you've probably been running around doing a billion things today, either working with young children or if you're a parent, helping young children do whatever it is that they're doing. Um, so we're just going to do some settling in and I like to call this it's a beautiful sunny day today where I live. And of course, if it's not sunny, you can always pretend that it is but I've got my love is my superpower t shirt on today to make me feel very loving and I'm going to just lead us in a little breathing activity. I, I just call this sunshine breathing. So I invite you to do this with me. It's kind of fun if you, if you might sit if you want to stand however you want to do it is fine. But basically, we're just going to um, first let's get our wiggles out. So just go ahead and, you know, roll your shoulders, move your head, whatever you need to do. Get get into your body again. <laughs> we can kind of walk around like this all day and it's really good to kind of loosen up. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. And then let's just do some sunshine breathing. Basically, we're going to just as we breathe in, we're going to raise our arms up to the sun and try to hold on to that beautiful sun. And as we breathe out, we're going to feel those rays, those beautiful sun rays coming into our hearts. And again, breathe in up to the sun and breathe out Get those beautiful sun rays into your heart. Breathe in. Breathe out and feel that beautiful sunshine warming your heart and just rest your hands over your heart and feel, just feel the love that you have for yourself right now. Self-compassion is so important. So just love, just take a moment to love yourself. Feel that sunshine warming your heart. Take a few just regular breaths just to be in the moment. When I count to three, we're going to do a sunburst of love out to everybody in this community today. You're going to wiggle your fingers out like this to everybody, but we're going to do it in a sunburst. So I'm going to count to three and say go. Ready? One, two, three, go. Wiggle all that sunshine out. Send all that sunshine love out to everybody with us today. Beautiful, beautiful. Ah, oh, feels good. So, so this is obviously something you can do with young children to sort of as a as a transition activity. Um, whatever the whatever the activity you're working moving into, it just kind of gives a nice um, nice little break from from activity to activity. And of course, as adults, it's nice too. I actually like to do this throughout the day for myself. It's important. Okay, so. Um, today, we're going to have a lot of fun together. We are going to, as, as Kim was mentioning, we've, uh, this is the second webinar in a series, but don't worry, because I'm going to give you a recap of what we did in, in, the, in the first webinar. And it's all about joyful reading. So it's the, the big umbrella is joyful reading, and we call it a routine that you can use um, at home and at school. And today we're going to be we're going to be primarily focusing on creative expression and be talking about how creative expression supports all sorts of things, supports language and literacy development, social emotional development, mental and emotional wellness, um, among other things, and including um, just uh, an artistic um, sense of self in itself, which is which is of high value. 
Um, we're going to give you lots of examples of creative expression activities. Uh, Danielle and Thea, as Kim mentioned earlier, they're going to share how they've been um, engaging in this project um, at their school sites with their school communities. And we're going to just load you up with lots of resources. So it, but as I said, it might feel a little bit overwhelming, like a lot's coming at you. But the idea is that we just want to give you a lot of options for engaging in creative expression activities in whatever context you're in. So as I said, I want to give you just a brief recap of, of webinar one because um, uh, there's just some key things that are important to keep in mind as we move into uh, the content of today's webinar. And I also want you to let you know that I'm going to, um, I'm just going to explain some things and, and then we're going to show you where all the resources that I mentioned are. <laughs> so you're going to have full access to them. So uh, in our first webinar, we talked, um, we actually focused on sort of the actual reading of the book experience, a shared book reading experience with a particular type of book that we are promoting. And um, so in, in the Joyful Reading webinar one, we focused on really paying attention to the types of books that we are selecting um, to read with our young children. And we, uh, we prioritize culturally affirming books and, uh, and, and books that are very inclusive of, our, of the students that we are serving, the children that we're serving, or if we're parents, the children that we are, are nurturing in our homes. Um, and this, uh, you can see just a few examples of the books that, that, that we love. So one of the books that we talked about last time was I Am Every Good Thing. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that book um, later. Um, and these are some other um, book covers of some really wonderful um, books that nurture, um, nurture students, children's minds, but also just make them feel affirmed as human beings <laughs> and for what, whatever their multi-layered identities are. The other thing that we look for when we're choosing books is that we want books that are have rich language in them. So beautiful figurative language, beautiful vocabulary, um, just beautiful language in, in all its forms, because that's really uh, modeling the kind of language that we want our, our young children to start engaging with um, in terms of their understanding, but also using. Um, they're, they're wonderful um, creators, our young children. So the more we expose them to rich language, the more they're going to be, be using that language. Um, and the illustrations, the artwork in these books is really important to us because um, as we know, a, a great um, children's book is not just about the words, it's about um, the, the visuals, the illustrations, the artwork. So we, we really, you can see just by the covers of these book, how, books, how beautiful the artwork is. And then the other, um, so that's sort of in the, um, the book selection, which is really important. And um, we've given you some resources in, in, in the Padlet that I'm going to share with you soon for how you might think about um, examining your own library to, to make sure that um, you're including lots more of these books. And then we also talked about um, the importance of dialogic reading. So, so a, a really rich shared reading experience with young children where there's lots of talking um, before, during, and after the actual reading of the book. So lots of um, encouragement to young children to ask their own questions, to notice things, but also um, quite a bit of prompting from, from the adult. Um, reading, reading the book, you know, asking particular questions about what's happening in the, in the story or the um, whatever kind of text type it is, but we've been really focusing on stories and narr narrative texts, um, asking about the, the language in, in the books that we're reading. Oh, what do you think that means? Oh my goodness. How does that, how does that phrase make you feel? And just so there, so we can get children kind of acclimated to noticing these things um, in, in these beautiful books. Um, and then of course, talking um, after um, after the book has been read about like, gosh, what do you think, the, what, did you, what did you enjoy most about that book and why? What was your favorite part and why? And what do you think the author wanted us to learn from reading this book together? Those types of questions are the kinds of questions that um, are really gonna get to deeper thinking and deeper engagement. Of course, the questions about like, who are the main characters and where, where do they live and what's happening now, those are critical. Um, but we're, we're really also kind of wanting to really get, get, our, get our young children into um, more extended discussions about, about the books that we're reading, because that not only helps them um, engage more deeply with the book, but it also helps with language and literacy development. 
So as I said earlier, um, we, we focused last time in particular on this beautiful book called I Am Every Good Thing by Derek Barnes and, um, and illustrated by Gordon C. James. And this book, one of the reasons why we love this book um, is that, uh, well, it's written by two, it's written by a, um, a, a Black author and it's narrated by a, a Black boy. And the illustrator is a Black um, illustrator also, which I, we think is very, very important. It promotes, um, the, I think the thing I love most about this book, and, and obviously everybody has their own interpretations, but it just promotes a love for yourself. So it promotes um, self-love and in particular pride in one's Black culture and history. And of course that can be transferred to anybody's <laughs> culture and history, but I think especially, um, it's especially important to be focusing on um, providing opportunities for young, young, young Black children to have pride in their culture and history. Illustrations are gorgeous. They're just beautiful. And the language is beautiful and rich and the vocabulary is so, um, so amazing and uh, provides such great models for, for children as they're learning to create their own, their own um, stories. It, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the narrator is just um, so, um, has so many different um, aspects that you see throughout the book. He's talented, smart, hilarious, loving, and curious, and also encounters challenges. Um, and but when the when the narrator encounters challenges and when things are hard, he shows us how important it is to be brave and hopeful and, and know that we're all worthy of kindness and respect um, and safety and happiness. And so so this book is a really um, it's one of those books that you can just read over and over again. And um, that's what's been happening. Another book that we um, we have been featuring, although though we didn't talk about it too much last time, is um, this wonderful book called Esther the Wonder Pig. And Esther the Wonder Pig um, is just, first of all, it's hilarious, which is really fun. So it's funny and engage, has an engaging plot, and that's really important um, for engaging in these, these uh, rich discussions with children. But it's also promoting compassion, and that's a really important thing right now. So it's promoting compassion for animals and really kind of getting us to think about what our responsibility is for, for caring for them and caring for each other. It also has uh, features of very loving family with two dads, which teaches us that all families are different and they're what we make of them. And the most important thing in, in a family is love. So those are two books that we that we featured in the, in the first um, webinar. And we also shared um, sort of the sequence of the dialogic reading. We gave ideas bef uh, for before, getting excited about what we're reading about, um, ideas for connecting with the, with the ideas in the book and the language and the art, and then some ideas for, for after reading. And, and we just gave a little nod to the expression activity, uh, ex creative expression activities, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. So that sort of, um, you know, in a nutshell, what we talked about. The other thing that we provided um, is some uh, home and school reading guides to support teachers and, and uh, parents and families and caregivers to engage more deeply with these two books, um, either at school or at home. So there's, it's basically a two-sided two, two piece of paper, um, the guide. And on the, on the first side, it gives a little synopsis of the book. And um, on the second side, some creative um, expression activities, which again, we'll go over today. We also gave some templates because we, we are a big believer in um, crowdsourcing. <laughs> We're really hoping that as um, people kind of engage with some of the ideas that we're sharing with you, you'll get really excited about creating your own um, home and school activity guides and you'll, you'll share them with us and we'll be able to share them with the world. So we have, um, oh, the home, home, um, home and school reading guides are in both English and Spanish currently, and the templates are in both English and Spanish too. And we'd love to uh, translate in, in more languages as we move forward. Um, so there is a, there is a recording if you want to, um, you know, just kind of do a little more than the little recap that I did. There's a recording of, of our first webinar and, um, there's also the slides available and where they are is in a Padlet. And I believe that Delphine is pasting the link to the Padlet right now. 
and we won't we won't be spending a lot of time. Um, I'm not going to take you to the Padlet. I, I'm trusting that you can just kind of go there. And if you want to take a look at it while we're doing other things in this session, that's fine too. Um, but you can see on the, in the on the very left hand side those home um, home and school reading guides that that um, I talked about for those two books. And then there's a whole slew of material of resources. So it's gonna when you first get in there, it's gonna feel probably a little overwhelming. But just you know, peruse at your leisure and see what strikes your fancy, and and see what kind of um, attracts you, and then just go there and um, have fun with it. Okay, so that was a just a little brief um, tour of what we did in webinar one. And one of the things that um, when you take a look at those home and school reading guides um, with the I Am Every Good Thing um, book, remember I told you that it's all about self-love and self-affirmations. Well, I, I believe it was Danielle that shared um, this morning affirmations for kids with me. This, actually, as an adult, I kind of want to do this every morning for myself. But I just wanted to share with you um, a creative expression activity that you could do that's connected to that book. And I'm just going to show you a brief, a, a brief part of it so you can see um, what it's like. And if you want to say some of the affirmations as I'm playing it, please feel free. Speak these affirmations every morning before you start your day. I have purpose. I have purpose. I am a good person. Has meaning. My life has meaning. I am here for a reason. I am here for a reason. I am important. I am important. I am intelligent. I am intelligent. I love who I am. I love who I am. I am filled with love. Can change the world. I can change the world. Okay, so that was just a little brief uh, teaser, a preview. <laughs> Hopefully, to encourage you to check that out um, and you know use use as you would like. So I just want to pause because I've been talking for a solid uh, amount of time, and I just want to pause because I haven't obviously been monitoring the chat. I just want to see if um, Kim or Julie or Anybody has noticed any questions that have come up or comments? Folks are loving the affirmation and asking for links and all of the links are in the Padlet. Yes. Um, to the videos, to the blank templates, to the Spanish template. So we tried to put it all in one place, but please let us know if you can't find it. Yeah. Um, and people have been asking about um, certificates of participation and we have a link in the chat for a form to fill out if you um, would like proof of participation that's what we can provide great thanks okay so any so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep going then and please keep asking your questions and kim and kim and julie know that to just kind of jump in if there's a question that comes up and and uh, so don't be shy um comment question any share resources anything you want is great there's also a place in the padlet if you want to share your resources so um don't be shy about doing that either. Okay, so moving on to the second side of that um, of, of that guide that I've been talking about, and the whole second side has to do with creative expression activities. And we've sort of um, tried to like put everything in there because we really feel that this that it all needs to be integrated. So. For us, part of joyful reading means everything you do around the actual reading experience as well as the actual shared book reading. So the way we have conceptualized creative expression includes things like kindness and community, and it includes things like mindful, mindfulness and self-awareness um, so that you can kind of get into that self-compassion and self-love and compassion for others that um, I alluded to in, in the previous um, section. Um, it includes visual and digital arts, movement and music, poetry, and literacy and oracy. So this is not to say that you have to try and do everything all the time. <laughs> and um, in fact, that would be kind of hard. So we, we're, what we're doing here is we're providing options 
and ideas. And really it's just intended to kind of spark your own creativity and um, give, give you ideas for unleashing your own creative powers with, your, with the children that you serve. So this is side two, what side two looks like of that um, home reading guide. And uh, I'm gonna go through and give you sort of the example. So you don't have to feel like you have to read this teeny tiny font here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the sections and explain them. So um, first of all, in addition to the fact that focusing on creative expression is just really fun and joyful <laughs> and intrinsically, we know it's a good thing to do. The great news is that research shows us that we're getting some big payoffs by, by prioritizing creativity. So we know that creative expression and arts integrated experiences, um, they provide unique opportunities to help our ch young children express themselves and communicate their, their ideas and who they are to the world and also understand the world around them. We also know that um, creative expression promotes um, social emotional well being and social emotional development and can enhance um, children's self esteem, as well as their self awareness. Um, we really learn about ourselves through creative expression. Um, when the arts are integrated and creative expression is integrated throughout the day. We, we know that this um, promotes uh, motivation. It makes learning more fun and it makes it more meaningful and feel connected. And um, it helps our, our students be more connected um, to school. And also, by the way, boost academic achievement. So all good things. Um, Specific, when we think specifically about language and literacy development, I'm, I'm um, a, a researcher that focuses on language and, and literacy development in particular for and specifically for multilingual children. Um, it's really encouraging what the research is showing. And these are some recent um, studies showing that all types of arts integration is really having um, a huge beneficial impact on children's uh, oral language development and um, reading comprehension and uh, written development. So um, if you wanna integrate more creative expression activities into your daily, um, daily curriculum and somebody is telling you no, uh, you can point them to the research and say, well, the research shows that it's actually having some real tangible academic and social emotional ben benefits and it's fun. Um, so I'm just going to start with um, mindfulness and kindness. And uh, actually, this would be like mindfulness, kindness, and community. And this kind of, uh, the reason we wanted to include this is because um, it's just critical to incorporate this, this whole, whole child approach um, in early childhood education. I think early childhood education educators know this. We understand this, and, and sometimes we have to continue to make the case um, that um, focusing on our children's mental and emotional well-being is, is just good all around. We know that mindfulness practices really do align very well with social emotional learning, and um, there's a huge opportunity to integrate contemplative education with social emotional development. Um, and we also know that it's really important to um, maintain an open-minded stance so that we are not um, being too prescriptive in, in the way that we're approaching mindfulness and kindness and community and ensure that we're being culturally and linguistically um, competent and sensitive. We're thinking about our uh, establishing pluralistic community, classroom communities and that um, all of our, all of our uh, mindfulness and kindness and community practices are focused on um, this greater goal of social justice um, and self-actualization. I just love this beautiful child right here. Um, I want to make a poster of this beautiful child and um, learn to sit that way because I wish I had that flexibility. So I wanted to talk just briefly about this hot new topic in, in um, the neuroscience world called neuroplasticity. You may have heard of it. You may have read about it. Maybe just kind of let us know in the chat if, if this is a new term or if you've heard a little bit about it or if you know a lot about it. Um, it's, it's pretty new and it's pretty exciting because um, one of the things that we're learning from, from neuroscience is that um, our brains are plastic. <laughs> so neuroplasticity basically um, has to do with your, your, your brain. Every time you learn something new or experience something, your brain is like 
it's reshaping itself. And, and we have the, the ability to actually create new neurons, new neural pathways, new connections. Um, and so it really matters what we're focusing on. Uh, one of the things we know um, from uh, about from the trauma trauma informed research is that I, I do this all the time. This is like your brain. If, if anybody's familiar with Dan Siegel, he's a neuropsychiatrist. He he's big on uh, talking with children about how your brain works. But basically, one one of the ideas is that you know with with trauma and stress, the, the part of your brain that has to do with fear and anger and, and things like that, the amygdala is kind of in control. <laughs> And with, with mindfulness and kind of um, focusing, helping to focus our mind on the present and on the breath and things like that, we can, we can help create greater connections between the prefrontal cortex, that's the, this part of the, part of the brain, and, and the amygdala so that we can help children to identify their emotions, learn to respond to their emotions rather than reacting from a place of, of fear and anger. And we know that right now we're in a really um, challenging time. And um, so it's really exciting, all the things that the neuroscience research has to teach us. One of the things that I wanted to, to mention is that um, so some one of the things that the neuroscientists are telling us is that what you practice grows stronger. So it's not just a matter of like doing mindfulness once every once in a while or meditation once every once in a while. It's really this repeated practice of mindfulness and meditation and kindness and gratitude and, and self-compassion often and frequently that is gonna help us grow those areas of the brain to be stronger and um, more flexible. So the question, neuroscientists ask is what do you want to spend your time on? And if you're interested in learning more about neuroplasticity, I put my three favorite TED Talks from, uh, they all happen to be women neuroscientists, but I put those in the Padlet. So um, if you're a TED Talk junkie like I am, <laughs> have at it and enjoy. And this is a, um, this kind of goes along with like, what is it that we want to spend our time on? What is it that we want to help our our young children cultivate and grow in their brains. And Rick Hansen, he's, a, he's also a neuro, uh, I think it's a neuropsychologist, but he um, talks a lot about um, uh, focusing on positive emotions. Like if we, if we are focusing on these pos positive emotions, these can actually, and research shows that this will actually, um, through mindfulness and meditation, strengthen your immune sy system, um, protect your heart against stress and trauma, and help you build stronger connections with other people, which in itself is a, is a, is a trauma buster. Um, it helps you increase um, resilience and helps you be successful in all, all different times. So, so that's why it's important to protect joy in all its forms, especially when we're um, facing challenges, we really need to, we really need it. I just want to, I want to make sure that when we're talking about, I know I'm kind of blasting through this, so this is not a course in mindfulness and meditation, but I just am making a pitch for us to um, take a closer look at it as, as people who work in education for our own mental and emotional well-being, but also um, to really consider the power that it has for our young children and our, and our parents, families, and communities. And I love this Thich Nhat Hanh um, quote, which is uh, breathe in deeply to bring your mind body to your home. And of course, Ram Das, if you're familiar uh, with Ram Das as be here now, research also shows that um, people are more happy when they are more present. So mindfulness and meditation helps us to be more present. I also just wanna make a pitch for this uh, book by Thich Nhat Hanh, which is happy teachers change the world. And if you're interested in learning more about this, this book is chock full, see how thick it is? It's chock full of different mindfulness meditation activities that, that you can do. There are lots of free resources in the Padlet, so you don't have to spend money. That's one of the great things about this is, is most of it's free. But um, if you're interested, the other book that I wanted to recommend is, um, I had mentioned Dan Siegel. This is a great book called The Whole Brain Child. It's actually a book for parents. I find it useful as an educator to um, help me understand how to talk with young children about how their brain works and how we can talk, you know, identify our emotions and, and respond to them. And not, it's not about getting rid of anger and fear and things like that. It's about how, how we respond to them. 
Okay. So just to give you a little um, taste, th these are some um, of the activities. These activities are embedded in those home uh, uh, reading, home and school reading guides. And um, I was gonna do a meditate, a, a, let me see if I have time. I, I don't think I have time. Well, let's do a little one. I'll do a little one with you so you can feel what it feels like. So let's just once again, just a really like a one minute meditation. Go ahead and put your hands over your heart. Again, I, I, this is from Kristen Neff, who, who uh, practices self, she, she's a um, meditation teacher focusing on self-compassion. And it's just really important to give yourself this loving kindness as you touch your heart. And just breathe deeply a few times. And let's just add a little self-compassion and the way I like to practice self-compassion is saying um, the following things. May I be safe. May I be peaceful. May I be kind to myself. May I accept myself just as I am. You can say that in your head with me. May I be safe. May I be peaceful. May I be kind to myself. May I accept myself just as I am. And just a little bit of that throughout the day to yourself and with our young children um, can make a big difference. And you'll see that there, these are embedded in the, in the home reading guides. Just briefly, because um, Danielle and Thea are going to talk a lot about arts integration in their schools. I just want to reiterate the point that the arts are important in their own right, but also because they're, you know, because we need more creative people in the world. And we, um, some people say that um, part, what distinguishes us, because we all are animals, right? What distinguishes us from other animals is our creativity. Some people do say that. Um, but we also know that arts integration has a whole slew of benefits, um, academic, social, emotional, et cetera. Those are some key points to remember. And in the home reading guidance, you'll see just some little ideas that you can use to, um, to get, you, get you further in your artistic journey with young children or get you started if you're, if you're starting out as, a, as an educator of young children. Um, so this is just a very specific example of a movement where you can kind of get dancing. So in this in this instance, you would um, actually let's just do it because I think we have uh, time in the minute that I have left to do this. In this activity, basically, you would after you read the book, there's these this beautiful language in the book, and you can see on those bullet points, those are phrases from the book: a nonstop ball of energy, a glow of moonbeams, a cool breeze, etc. So you could put on some music. And let the children know that when you freeze, you're going to say one of these phrases from the book that they just love, enjoyed. And they need to kind of creatively show, show you what that means. So we're just going to try one of them for fun because this is about joyful learning. So if I can find my music, I'm going to play and then I'm going to freeze and I'm going to tell you the phrase. And then you're going to show me what that looks like with your body. If you're brave, you don't have to. But um, just if you want to play, if I can get my thing to go to the music. Here we go. Okay, ready? You can dance when the music is on. Just dance until I like Okay, hey, now freeze. And now I want you to show me what a cool breeze looks like. You can even make noises, sounds with your mouth. Okay, that was just one little example. I wish we could just do this the whole time, but you can in, in your own context. You can take this and do it however long you want. Um, and just briefly, literacy, poetry, literacy, and oracy are also in the card. And um, we know how, how um, critical it is for young children to have rich opportunities to develop, to develop not only their 
um, written language, but also their oral language. So we want to infuse opportunities for them to, to express themselves creatively through drama, through, through puppet shows, through poetry, spoken word, creative writing, um, whatever the case may be, this is all um, fueling their rich language and literacy development. And I just chose this. Um, if you haven't seen Amanda Gorman's inaugural um, poem, uh, please look it up and watch it and watch the whole thing. You will just feel inspired and fueled by the power of her poetry. Um, she's the youngest, she's 22 years old, youngest inaugural poet. Thank you for hearting her. Yes, she's awesome. Young, youngest inaugural poet in, in US history. And this is an example of what um, all of our young children can develop into as long as we are cultivating um, their creativity. And again, you'll find lots of examples about how to do that on our home um, and school reading guides. Just wanted to show you a few examples, whoops, from our um, wonderful community of practice. This is da Danica from Irvine, California, and she um, uh, shared the book, I Am Every Good Thing with her children. And they created these life-size murals where they painted themselves or colored themselves and, and came up with all these wonderful ways of describing themselves. And it's just a beautiful way to, to affirm, um, affirm yourself and affirm the love you have for yourself. So thank you, Danica, for sharing. And this is just some writing. I did this in my own organization with some children, um, young children um, across my organization virtually, and they sent me some examples of their art and writing. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, and I'm going to skip this part right now because I really want to hand things over to Thea. But I want to make sure that before I do, um, are there any, were there any questions or anything, anything significant, Kim or Julie, that I can address before we move on? No lots of questions, just no a questions. lot of gratitude. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Julie. Just the same, okay. a lot of gratitude, lots of sharing, lots of appreciation. Yay. Please continue to share. That's how we learn and grow together. Share the love. Okay, so I am going to um, pass the baton over to my wonderful colleague, Thea Fabian, who is the vice principal for Malona K-8 School in the Fresno Unified School District. Thea is an amazing school administrator and she is gonna share how she has been um, collaborating with her school community on some of these things. Thank you. Yeah, so excited to be with you guys again. It's so nice to bring together like such a big group of people who just wanna do wonderful things with kids in the world. Love it. Yeah, so um, yeah, if you, um, Kim, do you wanna advance to the next slide? So I'm Thea and I'm the vice principal at Wawona K-8 School. And we have a block of social emotional learning that all our kids have right now once a week and then we kind of integrate it throughout the day and um, what we're working on is combining social emotional learning capacities like under the castle skills and um, creativity and also developing parent leadership around culturally and linguistically responsive texts and today I also have with me our librarian and some of our parents. And so after I speak for a little bit, I'm going to be asking them some questions for, so they have an opportunity also to share what they've been doing. All right, and these are some pictures from um, one of our classes and I put up there un enfoque en el amor y el autoestima. Um, a lot of our work, I think, is um, hyper-focused on a positive self-esteem, and so the kids were able to, um, this was actually part of reading I Am Every Good Thing, y en español soy, soy todo el bueno, and um, the kids selected words that they felt really reflected who they were and helped to kind of sponsor their positive identity development. Um, in this next one, um, I love this one. There's a project with um, that is on the um, California EL roadmap, and it's all about your name and the meaning of your name as a way of sharing a piece of your identity. 
And um, this popped up in the text and the teachers thought, why don't we ask the kids about this? Me gusta que me llamen. I, I like people to call me. And the kids ended up writing about their own names and um, their significance. Some of them interviewed their parents and asked them, why did you give me that name? And they wrote about it. Um, and in this little picture, some of the kids are, share, are just sharing, um, me gusta que me llamen. Um, to share their names. And um, in another classroom activity, we one of our culturally responsive texts and just generally a good text is the book Sulwe, which is written by Lupita Nyoko, the um, Mexican Nigerian actress. And um, it's all about colorism and Sulwe uh, talking and developing this wonderful conversation with her mom um, about her beauty. And so this generated a lot of um, wonderful deep reflections on the part of the teachers and the kids. And our teachers really dive in. So they had, so the first one is like mi nombre significa, because in the book, um, Solway's mom talks to her about why she, why she named her Solway. And then in the next, one, um, she's talking about the, sh the shine of her eyes, el brillo de mis ojos. And so the kids are writing, el brillo de mis ojos es tan resplandeciente como la... They, they're, they're developing their language, so they're putting together different pieces of English and Spanish, but he said it's resplendent like the sun. Um, and somebody, somebody said, well, it's like, actually, it's my eyes are resplendent like the moon. So the kids are talking about the beauty of their own eyes. And then this one is about the color of our skin. And so the kids spent some time thinking about the beauty of their own skin, because this book is about um, loving the skin that you're in. And so in this one, when the kids wrote to El Color de Miquel es tan hermoso como, it's so, it's as, it's beautiful just like something. Um, so other projects that we've been doing include Yo Soy poems. And so our second grade team um, has worked on Yo Soy poems um, about all the positive um, things that they are as individuals. And they've also created mosaics of themselves. Okay, so um, at this time, I was going to ask my um, our wonderful librarian, Jennifer Agazarian, to share a little bit with us about our biblioteca, our physical and digital library work and um, the things that she's been able to, to do to make connections with our work and working with culturally and linguistically responsive texts, um, but also kind of just our, our greater mission of the school and connecting with parents um, more strongly and, and building our resources. Uh, Jen, are you ready? I am. Hi, uh, I'm the librarian here. We do have middle schoolers and Spanish elementary, which is a fun and exciting thing. And you'd, you'd wonder if the middle schoolers like the elementary, and yes, they do. Middle schoolers love working with elementary students, and I can't wait until we're back in the same space to be able to share together. Um, real quick, my biggest plug as a librarian this year for SEL work has been Kobe Yamada. If you've never heard of this author, um, beautiful books and all this one's Maybe, which we've selected for our cultural responsive and SEL work. And it's a story about the endless potential in all of us. And just, I just, they've really spoken to me. They speak to the kids. They're just very, he's a great author. Um, also wanted to discuss, so we did, as you can see on this slide, we have started a website um, where parents can go. Um, and down at the bottom, one of our parents that you'll hear from had an amazing idea about I like books to pick books based on other people's suggestions. So on our site, we actually added a place where parents can add what they're personally reading and what they're reading to their kids so that we can share that as a group. And as that builds and grows, I'm planning on sharing those responses with our whole community so we can share and love reading together. Because of course, uh, as a librarian, 
And as a lifelong reader, it is my mission to help kids love reading. My personal story, I struggled to learn to read. I am dyslexic um, and still struggle with that as an adult. Uh, but my mother worked very hard to get me excited about reading and just committed and seeing myself in books. So I'm just very committed to helping my kids see themselves in our books. An example that I've been reading this week for Women's History Month, I read Una, which is about a treasure hunter library or treasure hunter mermaid. And the kids have enjoyed that one. And the fact that it's an African-American character, yet they never make reference to it, I think is beautiful because it's authentic. It's this isn't a book about an African-American girl. She just happens to be the main character. And I think that's really powerful for our kids to both get the clear message, but also just see themselves in an awesome story. So I've enjoyed that. The one Miss Fabian wanted me to share about is Give Bees a Chance, which was just, I'm all about education and entertainment. I was a theater major before I decided to become a teacher. So entertainment is a huge part of education to me. And uh, Bethany Barton has just done an excellent job with this book. And the kids got so excited. And I read this to my third grade group and they all started sharing stories about pools and bees. And I always see bees by my pool and I got stung. Blah, blah. And I said, well, our book doesn't talk about that. And I said, why don't you go out and figure out why bees are always by pools and water? And so they all went out and did research and sent me, and this is third grade. I love it because I met with uh, the first person to respond. So she got the biggest prize. Um, she didn't know what a link was. And I got to talk to her guardian about providing valid research to back up her statements. So I got to inadvertently teach a third a grader how to do research. But just such an exciting, getting my kids excited about books is my main goal. And I've had a blast with it this year and connecting with them on a real level. Even during all of this, I've tried so hard to help them feel good and see themselves and connect that way. And it's been a blessing, but yeah, so that's mine. Thank you, Jen. So um, thank you so much for sharing because the librarian at our school, you can see first she's amazing, <laughs> but also that she's such an integral part of um, making things work in terms of X at our school because she's totally tied into every single person at the school. So she works with every single teacher on campus she reads to the kids. She collaborates with the middle school departments on texts that they're reading with the kids. So I think um, her central role in this for us has been really, just really fantastic. Um, for, so for the last couple, uh, few minutes that we're sharing, um, if we could advance the slide. Oh, oh, let me share that last one real quick, actually. Um, this one is something that our second graders are about to do. Um, they're writing about things that make me beautiful, both inside and out. And then they're going to be working on I love me because. So a lot of like Kim, uh, like Pam was saying, they're going to wor be working on a lot of uh, self-love and positive self-identity. And um, the next slide takes us into our parent work. Um, I'll, um, Ms. Maribel Ternate, our parent lead, is going to be chatting with us. And I think we have a couple of our other parents in the room, too, which is awesome. And some of the things you'll hear about um, on the screen, we have one of our parents, Senora Cedo, reading a book about, um, about uh, hip hop, the history of hip hop. And um, also, you see some of the neat creative things that they've been doing. So, Maribel, are you ready to chat a little bit? Yes, I am. Uh, I hope you could all hear me. My name is Maribel Ternate. I'm part of the group. There's other parents here as well representing Wawona. And one of the goals that we were approached is that they wanted us to help out and pretty much we own it now. And it has been a blessing because now that we have more control of the project, we have been able to reach out to other parents. And um, some parents have gone far and beyond to create a reading challenge so we could get the students motivated to continue reading. Other parents have shared their personal experience of the value of reading. And other parents have volunteered to donate book markers and make creating goodie bags. So once a student has completed uh, their 
joyful reading, one of the joyful readings, then they will go to the and submit a post on social media on our library webpage. Then we will give them a little goodie bag. So I think it's um, motivational and some, many of the parents are doing activities in addition to what the students are already doing at school. So I think that's a big plus because the students just love just sharing with the parents. And when everybody does it together, I think it even makes a, a better uh, learning and, and a better em environment to just make it joyful. See, I'm not sure, do you? do you? Yes, um, do you wanna go to the next slide? Sure. Okay. Okay, so Maribel, do you wanna to talk to the, um, to the next slides that are coming up? Yes, I could do that. Okay. Okay. So as we mentioned, we did, uh, we started doing recordings of the video because we wanted to make sure that everyone had access. And one of the things that we want to make sure is that it, it, it's inclusive. We want to include all the parents. So we have done a, a recording both in English and in Spanish with the Joyful Reading Project. And one of the things that, um, as mentioned, we did the little goodie bags and it's all been donations. Parents have just been, oh, I'll do the goodie bags this, this time. And then we're gonna be rotating. It's all donation. We don't have to really work hard. It's pretty much just parents getting together and enjoying the, um, the connections with their students. And because of the success with the Joyful Reading, we now meet this group of parents. We meet once a week and we are beginning to get more ideas and we are searching for resources to help us find out how can we connect with more parents. And that's why we meet once a week um, from 8 a.m. to 8.30. And it works perfect because that's also the time that the administration has their weekly coffee chat with us. So I think many parents are motivating with that. So I'm looking forward to continuing the Hora Familiar. And we called it Hora Familiar for that main reason. We want to have a time with families that we also do the readings and the teachings at home. It's not just at school. Do you want to advance to the next slide, slide Kim? There we go. Jessica, would you like to chat with this one? Um, one of the moms, I don't know if she's here right now, but this is what one of the moms has created for us. This is our joyful reading goals. And what we are doing is we're having something printed out and then we are giving them to the families. And every time that the student completes a joyful reading, we get like a little stamp or something to indicate. And once they complete it and they do the activity on social media, then that's where they will receive their little goodie bag. Okay, we can, we can go to the next one. And Jessica, I don't know if you're there, but you can go ahead and pop in there anytime you want to share. Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say, like, I think this program, the Joyful Reading Project and everything, um, really enforcing children to read, especially in the dual immersion program that the kids are in right now, is awesome. I know um, growing up, my family kind of didn't, they weren't involved. It was, I came from a traditional Mexican family. So parents, you know, focused on working. So kids were supposed to focus on their work. And if we didn't know a subject or if we didn't know how to do something, then we had to we reach out to people at school to help us. And so the reading part wasn't really enforced in my family. So I really wanted to do that for my child because growing up, if I didn't have the educators that really pushed me to read, I think, I don't think I would have the love of reading that I have now. So I really wanted to, you know, enforce that on my children, you know, the love of reading and just like all the different opportunities it brings. And so I'm really um, glad I'm part of the 
joyful reading project. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about these ones, Mr. Nate and Ms. Castro. It was so good to hear you. Thank you so much for joining us. I love how um, you were able to express how parents having their own group where they can connect with each other on an authentic level. It helps to, you know, really build their own capacity and the things that they're doing with their own children. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for the slides that you see right now, this is in addition to what they're already doing in class. So this is not graded. This is just family time fun. So none of this is graded. And this parent did, or am I supposed to say who the parent was? I would, you can, you can give that cred if you have it, that's great. Okay, well, um, I'll just leave it blank. Um, but the, the parent did the poem after reading the book and describing of what identifies with the parent. And then the child did the poem on their identification. And this is a second grader in the dual language program. So just talking in addition to doing an extra activity, that's 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 the goal. And I think that's the overall like excitement. Like it wasn't an actual assignment and they were excited to do it with the parent because the parent was also involved. So I think that speaks value. All right, and we have like um, all these great things. And I saw some people in the chat also were commenting on, oh, I do that too. And there's, you get so much insight to your own children um, and children in school when they write the yo soy and, um, and all these beautiful things. I love the figurative language too. Um, okay, you wanna go to the next slide, Kim? And I believe these other uh, assignments are maybe a, a younger child. And you know, that that's the whole thing. It depends on the child because it's not an actual assignment. So I shouldn't even say the word assignment. It's creativity, fun, it's hora familiar. And it's just getting magazines. And if you don't want to write a poem, then you just get pictures that describe you. Like, what do you feel? So I think this is awesome that you know, we, we were able to talk about the images and why they selected certain things and why they like uh, certain items and just the description was amazing. So, and again, everything is just in addition to what they are already learning at home. And this just got started because, you know, parents read a book with their children and then they try to make a connection, a deeper connection with the actual book. And I think this is one of the best projects that I've been part of. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to continuing. Yeah, and I love this one where they get to cut out the magazine and, and paste it together. And it makes me think about cardboard projects too. We get your box from Amazon and you can do amazing things with that. You just need some scissors and tape and your Amazon boxes <laughs> and you're good to go. <laughs> All right. And, um, I, I don't recall if we have a, oh yeah, we have a couple more slides in this. Absolutely. Go ahead, Maribel. And I think I'm going to let Jessica, Jessica, um, would you like to share with us this um, activity of affirmation? Yeah, so I think right now um, my child is a first grader and she's really um, into her feelings and she wants to let us know how she's feeling and we've noticed um, she's a lot harder on herself than we would ever be on her. And so um, I just feel like it's important for her to know all her good qualities and all the positive stuff to focus on instead of, okay, you made a mistake today or, you know, you weren't behaving well during breakfast time with sister, but the day could be better, it could get better. And we just have to focus on the positive instead of, you know, anything negative, especially when they're starting out their day and then you know, having the pressure and stuff of learning online and being home all day. <laughs> so I think it just helps like the affirmations, just focus on the positive and keep going. Absolutely. Okay, well, as we wrap up, I just wanna, I wanna really thank our parents 
And I want to thank our outstanding librarian, Ms. Agazarian. Um, and uh, this project for me as an administrator in working with you know teachers, parents, uh, librarian, um, and the other administrators on our campus, it's been really neat because I've learned a lot about how we can work together more effectively to make things better in our schools and also just to keep promoting joyful reading. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, th thank you, Thea, and thank you, Wawona community. Um, really, really appreciate you. And if people can just flood the chat or use your emoticon, Zoom emotion, emoticons, whatever you call those, to show your appreciation for the Wawona school community, um, that would be lovely. Um, we have so many people on, so if everybody just puts a, an appreciation in in the chat, that would be beautiful, beautiful love. Um, so I next want to um introduce another wonderful amazing um, colleague and school administrator danielle garyani who um, is principal of horton elementary school and she is going to share how her school community has been engaging with the joyful reading project thank you pam thank you team Wawona. that that was i have a ton of ideas now <laughs> for our next our next step our next our next piece of joyful reading um so i'm danielle gariani thank you pam for that lovely introduction i am the very proud principal of horton elementary school in san diego unified uh, we are currently in online learning still uh, we have a few learning labs on campus and we're just about ready to move into uh, phase two reopening April 12th. So we're very busy. Share a little bit as to how we've been engaging with joyful reading since the last uh, webinar. Uh, if you could slide the uh, advance the slides. So our joyful reading approach, uh, we really, I, what I, what we really did was um, ground it in and and align it with our celebration of Black History Month. And um, while we celebrate Black History every month, right? It's something that we celebrate every month, every day, as are the narratives and the stories of of everybody who contributes to our history. Um, during Black History Month, we we focused a lot and really lifted um, the wonderful literature and and celebrated icons and um, really built built in. In, um, especially even more so that particular month um, around just the contributions of Black Americans. And um, we grounded um, our joyful reading in the text of um, Tar Beach, uh, which is an oldie but goodie. Those of you who've been around teaching for a while have probably are, are familiar with Tar Beach, which, which was written in 1991, won awards. Um, and so we really focused in on um, creative expression activities through this book, but we also engaged in interactive read alouds and interactive reading as well. Um, we looked at, uh, so I, I purchased the text for all of our teachers, all of our teachers read the book. We developed a, a home reading card and I will get that put up onto the Padlet as soon as I can. I'm in the process of translating it. So we'll get that to everybody. Um, and I shared the reading card with, with teachers. And basically I said, have fun with the book. We're, we're celebrating. Um, we engaged in some creative expression activities that I'll share. And we held our first family, our first virtual family art night as well. Um, this particular text we selected because it's such a rich, beautiful book with so many layers um, of, of the themes that are called out. And it's beautiful to use with young children. And we even had some very deep discussions and really unpacked it with our upper grade students. Um, and so it's a very, a, a very versatile book in the sense of, um, of being able to use it at, a, at an elementary site and even into middle school. Um, it's connected, it's, it's really integrated. You're able to integrate all kinds of standards, language arts, uh, VAPA, history and social science, if you dig deep with upper grade students and even language development. Um, go ahead, next slide to the, or to the next, to the next slide. So Tar Beach is written by Faith Ringgold. Um, we also chose Faith Ringgold because she is an award-winning artist, civil rights activist, and, and, um, an author. And, um, this book is about Cassie Louise Lightfoot. It's written in a uh, first person narrative, and it's really a story about dreams. Um, it's, it's written in kind of like a dream sequence. So it's, it's like a dream logic. So she's in between reality 
reality and this, this fantasy world. Um, and it's about a little girl, Cassie, who spends her evenings, the, the, the hot summer evenings in Harlem on her apartment, on the roof of her apartment building with her family. They call it Tar Beach. It's their getaway. It's their, it's their party place. Um, and it's where family meets to celebrate with neighbors and, and enjoy each other. Um, the story also takes place during uh, the Great Depression. Uh, shortly after the Great Depression. And so um, a lot of the themes and, and Cassie escapes, she flies, she flies over the city and um, becomes, she owns buildings. She owns the, uh, the Union Building, she owns the George Washington Bridge, and it's her way of, of escaping and, and really um, engaging with it with a very wild imagination. Um, I had mentioned that this text is very, is appropriate for many grade levels. Um, the themes, there's a lot to unpack. Um, the, it's, it highlights the theme of hope, of freedom, imagination, of family. Um, it really gets at racism and, and empowerment. And so our teachers were able to use this in different ways um, through some, some um, interactive reading. Go ahead and slide to the next, or move, the, move, move to the next slide. Um, Teachers, uh, we engaged in an interactive reading and we, I, I had shared the, the reading card with them. We created one for K2 and for third through fifth uh, based on, on the themes that we could unpack that a teacher might unpack with, with a particular story. Um, some of the interactive questions and the deeper dive questions were um, around how do we know that Cassie loves her family? What evidence from the story that we have? So we engaged in some of the images, some of the artwork in the text actually really um, demonstrate that. And so we had discussions about that. We even got to questions with the upper grade students around um, really looking at racism and discrimination. Uh, the story takes place in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And part of the story is um, that Cassie's father is out of a job um, and he was not allowed to join the union because he was black and Indian. And so um, we engaged our upper grade students in questions about discrimination and people being treated unfairly um, and, you know, talked about comparisons between the 1930s and racism that we see today. Um, so we were able to really unpack and, and engage students in an in interactive reading with this story. Um, teachers had their students in different ways respond to the text. Uh, on the on the, the first slide, the slide just before that, it was an example of our preschoolers, uh, our, our preschoolers, our pre-K classroom, our four-year-olds uh, that did a written uh, draw, a drawing response about one of their favorite parts of the text, and and that there's Cassie flying over the George Washington Bridge um, to own it. Uh, you can go ahead and advance to the next slide. Um, and in addition to engaging in interactive reading and responding, a lot of the teachers took on creative expression activities uh, for, for in, in different ways. So we had students um, engaging in, in using watercolor to respond to, if you could fly anywhere, where would you go and why? And so here's some examples. I believe this is a third grade example and, and a second grade example and a fourth grade example. So on the, the third grade example, um, the student, they used watercolors and um, talked about flying to Arizona uh, over the desert where it's beautiful and calm. Uh, second grade student talked about why she would go to the beach and that it made her happy. And then I believe the fourth grade student uh, with the Eiffel Tower, I think they used chalk. And so they were engaged to different, they were introduced to different mediums as well to, to respond to the text. I can go ahead and slide over. This, these are some examples of creative expression with our littles, with the, with the kinder and first grade uh, students uh, using paint. Some did finger paint uh, and some did um, use, use, a, use brush, used a brush with um, brush, a brush and paint. And, and again, we're responding to, if you could fly anywhere, if you had the freedom to fly anywhere, where, where would you go? So these are just some examples of the creative expression activities. And uh, one of the big events that we did have was we held our first uh, virtual family art night. I am very blessed to have um, a, a, a resident teacher, a resident artist on, on my campus. One of our kindergarten teachers, Miss Vance, actually was an art teacher for many years before she, 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 she jumped in to teach kindergarten. And so she led our students and our families through um, a virtual art lesson where students learned about design, about scale, about color, um, and so she 
we connected, we held the art night towards the end of the month after all of the students had read the text and engaged in interactive reading in their classrooms and then engaged in some type of creative expression activity. And so uh, we had everybody on Zoom at five o'clock one evening and uh, students, we, we, we pushed out the information to families to make sure their children had a, a piece of paper and a marker and some crayons or some type of coloring instrument. And she, guide, she guided them through um, how to make an interactive design. So they first cut out uh, their, their person, their, their interactive character, they, 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 made, they made themselves. And then she modeled um, either drawing or sketching how to create a landscape. And so here's some examples of some of the modeling that she did and she guided students through, they got to choose their landscape and then she helped guide them through drawing. Um, and they cut out the, the, the figure and then the student, the, the, the little doll was, was a student and they could fly over uh, the landscape that they had drawn um, at the end of, at the, end of the, the activity, at the end of the, 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 the lesson. Um, and so this is Miss Vance modeling how to draw, how to, how to, how to scale really, and um, some examples of, of her landscapes. You can go ahead and slide, uh, move the slides. Delphi into the, oh, I'm sorry. There we go. And so here's some examples of our students after they had done their, after they created their landscapes. Uh, it looks like Ezekiel right there has a, uh, he actually had his cutout of his, of his, of, of himself and was moving around, uh, around his landscape. So some examples of, of what the students created, you can slide forward it to the next, next slide. Uh, some more examples of our student artwork uh, during virtual family art night. And then this was our, uh, our end, our end before we logged off, everybody held up their, their, their pictures. So we had, uh, we had staff members join us, we had family members, parents side by side with their children. Um, and so it was a really, really exciting, um, really engaging evening, a lot of community building um, with, with our families. Um, a couple of key takeaways. Uh, this was our first virtual family art night. And um, a couple of key takeaways. I, I would definitely, when we do this next year, because we will, um, I, I think the book is, is a beautiful book. This particular book has so much to offer and so much um, to unpack that I definitely would ask my teachers to spend more time with the book, to slow down and take the time that this, this, this particular text really, really offers. You can analyze it through the art lens. You could analyze it through the, the thematic lens, the themes to unpack. Um, it, it, it's really a book that, that um, merits multiple, multiple reads and a lot of time. And I know right now with online learning, it's challenging and this notion of, I have to get through my curriculum because there's so much learning loss and, and we're already behind. And so really um, giving teachers and staff permission to slow down and enjoy this book. Um, there's so much to unpack and, and, and pull out of it. Um, there's so much joyful reading to come out of it. Um, I definitely think that um, encouraging more written responses with their artwork um, is also definitely warranted with this particular, this particular book, this particular uh, activity, um, but even going through poetry, it, um, expanding on some of those creative expression activities, poetry, um, movement, um, but, and, and, and including written responses with the artwork. artwork. Um, deeper connections to SEL as well. Um, I have a, an onsite, I have a, have a counselor and a guidance assistant who really support teachers and students with um, social emotional learning. They co-teach lessons. And this particular text also has a lot of connections um, to support students. Um, one of the themes in the book is job loss. Uh, Cassie's father was out of a job during the Great Depression and had to leave his family to go find work. And we know that a lot of our children um, a lot of my community is experiencing that right now with, with this pandemic. And so um, making deeper personal connections with the text um, through social emotional learning is, is something that I would, I would do again with this particular book, or I would, I would, deal, I would jump deeper into with this text. Um, and then finally, just an art, some type of art celebration, an exhibition, a whole school exhibition. We, we were able to celebrate on virtual art night, but, but actually uh, posting and making visible and making public the, the work of art that, that the children made um, and the responses is something that will, will, be, a, will be a next year task and a, a takeaway for next year. Beautiful. 
Um, thank you, uh, Danielle, and representing your school team. I know if this has been a, a super collaborative project at your school, and thank you, Thea and the Wawona team. Um, at this point, we have some time. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody's beautiful faces. Um, we have some time for um, questions. If anybody wants to share something, um, I'm going to ask Kim, Kim and Julie if you saw, or anybody on our team, to say if you saw something in the chat that you want to bring up. And if people want to open their mic to ask a question, you could raise your hand. It's a little ambitious to ask that with 300 people, but um, you know, hey, <laughs> we're risk takers. But Kim or Julie, have you been seeing any um, questions or? No, someone shared how they had a paint night to involve students. They sort of did something easy it was with paint. So that was great. Just the ideas building on what everyone was sharing. Beautiful. Yep, encouraging quality time with parents, um, how important that is right now. Just people loving all the ideas. They're just grateful. And the cutout, they, they really like the cutout. Yeah. Um, photo of the child to fly over the drawings, just like the interactivity of that without a screen. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Thea or Danielle, did you want to, um, I know that you were enjoying one another's um, sharing, and I know that you have a lot to talk about. Oh. Is there anything you wanted to um, ask each other or comment on each other's? Um, I'll be pulling from the Padlet. That will be another task that we'll be doing or some of the, some of the family. I, I, I really, I, I appreciate the Ora Familiar. Um, and, and for me personally on my site, engagement um, online has just been very, very difficult for families um, just because of circumstances, not because families don't want to, but because we're, we're still in a pandemic um, and, it's, and some of the hardships are difficult. And so finding ways to, to engage families and bring them in and make them more part of, of, um, of our schooling community is, is, is really something that's, um, that I'm, I'm working on and I continue to work on this year. And so I'll be reaching out, I'll be pulling from the Padlet and checking in with Thea and her, and her team to, um, to brainstorm and, and uh, thought partner. And yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I loved the art pieces you shared. And um, just one thing I was thinking is, as we come back to in-person instruction, we're coming back April 6th. As we come back to in-person instruction, one benefit I think will be to put the little flyer in the backpacks <laughs> to join the Ora Familiar and um, to just have increased contact um, and communication with parents. So um, apart from the difficult parts of coming back, that will be one of the great benefits. And Danielle, I wanna say someone shared that they taught Todd Beach with Quilt with the illustrations of her first kinder back in 1995. Yeah, I, I, um, I have a really young staff and so many of them had not seen it. <laughs> so it was a new, a new text for many of them. It was great, they, they enjoyed it. Um, and, and again, especially with our upper grade teachers, there's so much to unpack. So I'm, I, we've created the, the, the home reading card and I've actually differentiated it um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to actually develop it and have my teachers develop it more so we could turn it into um, a much, much more extended um, book to use um, as we move, move forward. That's great. And I wanted to share um, one of the things I'm, I'm really hoping people will find the, um, the reading guide, the home reading guide, home and school reading guide template to be useful for them. And just as a way to kind of capture the wonderful things that you're doing so that you don't have to try to remember, you know how it is as if you're a classroom teacher to try to remember what you did last year is really hard. So um, it can be used either be ahead of time to do some planning or it can be used af after you do a bunch of really great activities just to document it so you can remember. And I love the way that um, Maribel, you and your um, amazing team of parents have been innovating and and making this work so much better than you know we just were planting some seeds and you've just um made it blossom and bloom and so grateful for all of your creative minds on it so thank you um so with that i do want to um this is a good segue i'm going to see if i can share my screen without breaking zoom again let's see um let's see i think i go to okay i think we did it 
I do want to make a pitch because um, we do have following this webinar, everybody here is invited if you would like to come to a very interactive, like this session was not that interactive, though we did throw some interactive things on there. But um, we do have a community of practice session on April 15th from 2 to 3 p.m. And we welcome you to come. It's it just it is very interactive. It's mostly you getting into small breakout groups or coming and and in the whole group kind of talking, because the whole idea is like go out and try some stuff from based on what you learned today or from webinar one. Ideally, uh, try those home um, home and school reading guides, at least some of the ideas from them, and then come back ready to share because this is really what this community is all about. <laughs> like we all we get so much better and we grow so much more when we're sharing um, our amazing ideas. Um, and if you can also bring, um, if you're going to come to that that community of practice meeting, and it's low pressure. It's not like a test. It's just like come and talk and share and it's okay if you know you didn't get very far that's okay but if you can bring an artifact like a, an art piece a child did or a poem or a class you know something that the class did together um that would be amazing because we learned so much from seeing um what was done so we invite you to that i believe um an invitation to that will go out in some form or there's a link that's going into your chat which i cannot see is that correct um kim <laughs> Yes. Yep. Okay. Links in the chat and you'll get it with a follow-up email. Perfect. Rep repetition is really important. Practice uh, makes makes um, perfect. So we want to leave with you, leave you with um, beautiful image and quote. Again, I, we mentioned that um, we're just planting seeds here and we're so thrilled to see how all of your creativity is blossoming. Um, and the Rumi quote is, every leaf that grows will tell you what you sow will bear fruit. So if you have any sense, my friend, don't plant anything but love. So um, I'm going to come back to this and leave, send you out with some music and hopefully dancing to the rest of your day. But just a reminder that check your email. You'll be getting a survey link. Um, webinar recording information, invitation to the April 15th, 2, 3 p.m. community practice. And then if you have questions, please contact us. Kim, any Kim, any last words? Oh, just to um, thank our presenters again. Oh, you were amazing, right. <laughs> including Pam. Um, and there's just uh, so much going on in the chat that is a lot of love, I'm going to tell you. A lot of love coming back at you for what you're doing in this world. So thank you so much. And um, yes, please come back for the community of practice and please fill out that survey because we really do look at your responses and incorporate those into what we do next.